Hi guys, welcome back to the second tutorial about the new features inside of Blender 2.9. My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. As said in the first tutorial, I want to focus not only on the new features, but also how to use them in practice and give you a little tips and tricks to work a little bit more efficient. So I hope you find this useful. In this lesson, we want to talk about modeling tools and the first modeling tool, which is on the list is the extrude manifold tool. So let's get started here, I select my cube and I press the slash key over my numpad and I think my keyboard shortcuts are not there. So let's activate this little helper here so that you see what I'm pressing, okay. And now I press the slash on my numpad to go here to the local view and now I can dive here with the tab key into the edit mode. First, I want to talk with you about extrusions. And for this, I take the extrude tool, which is here in the list, extrude region, or you can press the E key on your keyboard. And if I select now this polygon here and I move it with a yellow indicator to the right, you see we make our first extrusion. Let's take a look into the cube. For this, I press the Z key on my keyboard and go to wireframe. And inside of the wireframe, you see now that the polygons here have a dot in the middle so that you can see where you have polygons. And you see an extrusion in reality is that you move the original polygon here to this place here and then you get a bunch of polygons adjacent to this polygon here. But the original polygon or the original position here is now empty so you don't get a wall inside of that. And this is a behavior which I want because you don't want to have in every extrusion later a polygon inside. So normal extrusion works like that and it's fine. So I press Z and move to the right with the mouse so to get back to the shading view and I take now this polygon here and I move up here to make something like a stair and then I move up again to have a second extrusion and now I decide that I want to have here this polygon here so I want to extrude this here out. And now comes our problem. If you select now this polygon and move it to the right, it looks correct, but Z to the left, you now see that this polygon here with the dot in the middle is still the complete size here. And you have here a new polygon from this extrusion here overlapping it. And so your model now messes up. And this is a normal thing in extrusions, which you have to keep in mind while modeling. And if you come from applications like, for example, SketchUp, this process here is solved by really clever programming. So if you come from SketchUp, you can use draw tools and push things around and the mesh is rebuilt all the time. And the topology later is really ugly, but yeah, it works because you don't have to think. And the new extrude manifold tool goes now into this direction. You don't need to use the new tool. If you go here into the options of your existing extrude tool now, there's a new option here with the name Dissolve Orthogonal Edges. So if you tick this, you see that the mesh is after the extrusion rebuilt. And this edge here is now gone. You also see that this polygon overlap here is gone. So this here is empty, this here is empty. These polygons are only here and yeah, this here, like I've said, is empty and this polygon is here. So this tool now builds the whole stuff for you. And if you press now Z, go to the right and you want to test this. So delete this here by going to X delete face. You can look inside and you see it's like magic. So it's a script running afterwards, not after the extrusion and removes the stuff you don't probably need. So let's go back now and now we want to use this new tool which we have in our list which is the extrude manifold tool and this tool does this all the time by default and it has some more features for working faster for example I want to change the size here of this step if you have a normal extrude tool it will now extrude this area but now Blender sees that this here is an existing polygon and I only want to move it and you see it doesn't extrude it, it only moves it. Same here, yeah, you can really go in here and bring it out without any problems. 
If you want to have an extrusion here because you need a new step, you can deactivate for the last step. So this step, which I've done here, this option, and then you get an edge here. But in most cases, if you block out, you don't want that. So do that. And then we can take this polygon here again. And I move this and you directly see the result. And set wireframe, you see, you get the right result here. So this is a really great addition. You see it works really cool. And you can now start, for example, cutting stuff around and doing stuff. Um, there are some limitations. Let's do something. I take a knife. You can press the K key on your keyboard to get a knife. And I want to look from the side. So while you are dragging with your middle mouse button, uh, you can hold down the Alt or Option key and then you see you snap to an auto view. In my case, the front view. And then I click here, for example, to this edge here. And what I want to do is I want to cut through the whole object. To do that, before I do the cut, you can read here in the status bar that you can press the Z key once to toggle cut through. It's off at the moment. So I press Z. Now you see, now it's on. And if you now click here, and now I want to go directly straight down so you can constrain your cut. And to constrain, you toggle angle constraint. So press once the C key. Then you have this white constraint here. Go, for example, to this point. I click here again. And then I can go to the left and you see 45 degree constraint here. I click here. And I go now with the constraint on to this point. And yeah, I can click here. If you are now done, you can press C again to get rid of the constraint. And you can now press Enter and cut through is on. So what I expect is now that you have a cut which goes through the whole object. Something like that. Cool. And now we go back to our tool, which is still selected. So I can select now this here. And if you now push this in, you see how cool is that. The only thing which is now a little bit strange for people coming from SketchUp, they are used to push through. So if you go here, for example, to this point here, which normally snaps, this base is gone. This tool inside of Blender doesn't do that. But what you can do is you can push through completely. And if you go now here, you see these strange artifacts in the viewport, but don't think about them. At the moment you release your mouse, the mesh is rebuilt and you have an addition here. So this works, but the only thing which doesn't work as a SketchUp user is uh, get rid of this polygon here. So what you can do is you can move it from here, you can move it from here, and you see artifact, but in the moment you release the mouse, the artifact is gone. Works fine for me. Yeah, and that's the function here. Now you can combine it with all the other tools. So if you press the I key, for example, first go here to select this one here, you can press the I key for an insert. You can go in here, make an insert. Now you can go back here to your extrude pushing or pulling. You can drag it out. So it works fine. Now let's go back here some steps. Another thing which may occur is if you use this tool. If you are used to work with Command R to making loop cuts, you now run into a small issue. Let's take a look here. So loop cut tool. Loop cuts are always around your object. But if the loop can't be done because you don't have quads, the loop stops. You see it here. Yeah, the loop stops all the time. The reason for this is really simple. These are n-gones and not normal polygons anymore, quads. So the thing is, you can use the knife tool, K, which I showed you. And the option for this was cut through. So this works fine. It works really good if you want to make a cut here through. So I can go here now, go to the side view. And you can first press Z. That's really important before you do it. So Z. Cut through is on, then you click here. If you want to constrain it, C key, you go here, click enter. And now if you turn this around, you see it's a loop cut. And now this works. So this is one way you can work with that. Then there is another tool which is named a bisect. 
But for this, you have to select a little bit of stuff. So let's select here the polygons which I want to have. So these here, for example. And we can go here to bisect and make a line here again. Yeah, you can say this time I want to cut it like that here. And then you have all the options here for the bisect, uh, which you maybe want to do. You can move this around, you can clear inner outer to cut it. Yeah, and if you now press the enter key and go here, you see also works. So different approaches to that. And the last thing which is then an, maybe an option which you can use is that you later build this mesh new. For doing that, you can, for example, dissolve edges. So if you go here and you have an edge, um, this edge you want to get rid. If you press the X key, you have here dissolve edges and you remove them, but you still have here the end gones. So you as an artist have to do the work to build your quads. What some people try to do, and maybe it works, is that you can go here through, delete all the faces here, for example, and then try fill options. For example, if you go now here into the edge mode, Alt click here to have this edge loop, and Alt F, for example, you get a fill, and you see the beautify uh, fill doesn't work too good because it is a complex shape. So you have to rebuild that. But for blogging out and uh, making ideas, it's a fine tool. And then you have to make a little bit of work to make this later a good model. Let's talk about the next tool here. So let's go to a new scene here. And the next tool is snapping. Snapping now works better. We have many areas where the snapping was improved. So let's do something here. Let's extrude here, for example, this area here, take the edge, bring it down, something like that. And now I want to snap something onto um, this area here. So I leave that and let's take to see it better and empty with arrows. And if you want to have this tool here, you can use, if you like, the shift spacebar menu. And then you see the keyboard shortcuts T. So it's a really fast one, shift space T, for example, to get this. Or you can select it here. And what I now want to do is I want to place this guy here, for example, here on um, this face. This is no problem. You can activate here the snapping and say I want to snap to the faces and then I take my tool and if you grab here in the middle you can do that. You see there's a little ring around here this middle point which I grabbed and so you know exactly that this here has snapped and this is the functionality we had before in older versions of Blender but you also sometimes want that you use constraints for snapping. What do I mean? If you are used to work with, for example, snapping, I switch here to vertex snapping. And you want, for example, that this guy here sits exactly of the height of this point. I don't want that the snapping here now drags this object to this point or this point. So what I do is I take the axis which I allow to move. It's the Z here. And then you show Blender by hovering over the points here where you want to place it. So you get now this object exactly here. So this has in older versions a limitation. Sometimes you have only constraints and sometimes the snap wins. And this is a problem. And in this new version here, there are new functions now that snapping with constraints work better. Let's demonstrate that. I go now here to face snap again. And I want now that only Y is allowed and I want to snap to this face. And this works now. So if you go now here over this Y and you now go over this face, you see it snaps perfectly in the point where the constraint hits the face. That's the idea. And then 
you have more options you can combine here. So if you press the shift key, you can combine here more than one snapping if you like. So nice feature. You have to play a little bit with that, but it's a really powerful feature if you are modeling and so on. Let's take a look into some features which are more obvious. So for this, I go into bevels. So let's take this object again. I go here into edge mode and let's take, for example, this edge here. You come to the bevel tool if you like with the right mouse button or control B or you can use the bevel tool. I drag with control B here to the right side and to add now segments, you can use your mouse wheel while you're working. Okay, make some segments. I make many segments because I want to show you a new feature. Okay, now we have many segments. If you now open up here this dialog, you will see that meanwhile we have a lot of cool functions. You remember that in the last version we had here for the profile this custom area here. And this custom area is now improved a lot more here. So we have here our presets. So we can uh, decide which presets you want to use. And this only works if you have enough segments. So don't forget to give them here. And beside of the presets, I go back to the default. We also can go in here. Let's go back to custom. And you can drag here. And don't wait until the viewport uh, refresh. It doesn't do, at my case, it refreshes when I release the mouse. Then you see the refresh here. But the new feature now is here. You see, for every point here, we now have a whole bunch of options. So this here is easy. So for this point, which is selected, we have here the coordinates. Okay. Then we have that it's smooth with the auto handle or it is a sharp point. And then we have now Bezier handles here. So if you go here, for example, to this option, then we have aligned free handles. So we can now use these free handles here to change them, or we also can break them. So now we have something like that. And this here works for every point. I make some more here to demonstrate that. So for example, for this point here, I want to have aligned Bezier's. For this point here, I want to have, for example, a sharp interpolation. Doesn't make too much sense, I know, but yeah, it's only for demonstration purposes. And now you see for every of these points, you can now add them here like you want. Same thing in the bevel modifier. So it's absolutely the same there. So now we have Bezier handles for custom profiles. Another thing which we have is in curve modeling. I know that most Blender users don't touch curves too much, but I want to demonstrate that. And uh, for better comparison, I open here the last Blender version. So let's get rid of everything. And with Shift A, I go to the curves menu and I make a Bezier curve here for you. I zoom with the comma key to it, tab key. And now you see that's the appearance of curve in the older Blender version. You see here we have two tangents because I've selected Bezier. Then we have here the curve and you see this curve normals, which are important because curves are really powerful inside of Blender. So you can extrude them and you can bevel them and so on. So these are important. And if you have a Bezier curve, it's also important that you know in which directions the tangents look. So what I normally do is I go to the tweak tool and now I start working here with these points. So with the tweak tool, you can, oops, tweak tool is here. I can grab these points. I can directly grab here the handles. If you want, you can use your right mouse button, click with control to add new points here or the E key like extrude, but I make a right mouse button, click with control here to make new points and so on. But this year was in bigger paths really distracting because you always see everything all the tangents, all the directions, and so on. And so in the 2.9 version of Blender, we have now a much better user experience. Let's take a look here. Let's go here to the top and zoom in. You see, I dive into this curve, and the only thing I see here now, tweak tool again, is if I deselect everything, nothing, only the curve and the points. 
great, no clutter. If you select a point here, you see your tangents, which you can work with directly. So everything like before, control click, control click, control click to make some new points here. And sometimes you say, okay, I want to see the direction and I want to see all the things we had before in the moments only under selected. Uh, we can now go, I think, let's search for it. Yeah, here in the viewport overlays. And here we have the curve edit mode now here. So the handles of busy curves, you only see the selected at the moment. You can switch this, that you never see them. Okay. Hmm. Selected or always. So if you go to all, you see them all without selecting them. So they only highlight if you click them, but you see the handles all the time. Distracting, I think. So I go back to selected. And if you want to see the normals again, because they are important for you, you can activate them and then you can change here the size of the normals. So nice small feature. I think it's really nice to have that. So this is new in the curves. So let's get rid of that. And yeah, that's it for the modeling tools here inside of Blender 2.9. I hope it helped you. See you in the next lesson.